Which can fly faster? A Vietnam War era F-4 Phantom or a 21st century F-35 Lightning II? It's indeed the F-4 Phantom, which has a top speed of Mach 2.2 compared to the F-35 Lightning with a top speed of Mach 1.6. The Phantom can go 450 miles per hour faster. And this is not some exception. Fighter jets have not gotten faster in the past 50 years, and in some cases, they have slowed down. Counterintuitive on the surface, but it all makes sense if you're high, like a pilot, because it's not what you think. Military aircraft were first used in World War I for reconnaissance and observation, but almost immediately enemy pilots began to attack each other with handguns and grenades. Not surprisingly, the advantages implicit in having high top speeds were quite clear. The faster aircraft could always attack or disengage from the slower one. The maximum speed of early World War I aircraft averaged at approximately 110 miles per hour, and by the end of the war, their speeds were up to 140 miles per hour. Just so you can appreciate what a significant factor aircraft speed was back in those days, when the British came out with the de Havilland Mosquito Bomber in 1940, the Royal Air Force didn't even put guns on the aircraft because it could cruise at such a high speed that was essentially immune against all of Luftwaffe's fighters. But it was during the Korean War, where jet aircraft were employed extensively for the first time. The maximum speeds of the CT-133 and MiG-15 were near Mach 0.9. Their best cruise speeds were also near Mach 0.9, and quite frequently, these aircraft flew at their maximum speeds. The desire for speed continued after the Korean War. Around the same time, jet engines with operational afterburners became available and the supersonic F-100 led in the era of Century Series fighters. The name Century Series stems from these fighters' designation numbers, which started at 100. The Europeans and Russians also developed supersonic aircraft of their own, like the Supermister B-2, Mirage 3, Lightning P-1 and MiG-19 and MiG-21. But these supersonic fighters had a totally new characteristic which had not been encountered previously. The subsonic fighters had a maximum speed that was very close to their best cruise speed. But supersonic aircraft had a maximum speed that was 50 to 100% greater than their best cruise speed because of afterburners. So hitting Mach 2 almost became a requirement. The Mach 2.8 speed of MiG-25 became the reason for justifying the need for a new fighter to the US Congress in 1968 to 1970. But this is where intuition meets reality. The Vietnam War went on for 20 years. During that conflict, both the US Air Force and Navy used various models of the F-4 Phantom while the other side flew the MiG-21s both of which had maximum speeds of Mach 2.2. But here is where things get interesting. Military analysts reviewed the flight data of more than 100,000 sorties flown by the Mach 2.2 American fighter bombers over North Vietnam. How many hours of flight combat time do you think was recorded at Mach 2.2, or Mach 2, or even Mach 1.8? The answer is zero. Not even one second of combat was flown at those speeds. A few minutes were flown at Mach 1.4 and remarkably few hours were flown at or above Mach 1.2. Remember, this is out of over 100,000 sorties over 20 years. So what was going on in combat that caused top speeds to remain completely unutilized? Turn rate is a vital parameter when comparing air-to-air -air combat capabilities of different aircraft. The higher the turn rate, the more quickly an aircraft can change its heading. And being more maneuverable is desirable when you're chasing or are being chased. Because of this, pilots typically flew their aircraft at a speed that allowed for maximum turn rate. But maximizing the turn rate will inevitably drive down the speed to about Mach 0.7 until an aircraft can be designed with its turn rate maximized in the supersonic range, air-to-air -air combat will occur at subsonic speeds. Now you might be thinking, having a top speed of Mach 2.2 at least allows the aircraft to get to the combat zone quicker, 
and then it can slow down to engage. That's true, but not so fast. The maximum distance an airplane can travel from its base to accomplish an objective and return is known as combat radius or combat range. Even when flying into the combat zone, supersonic speed is rarely advantageous. That's because flying supersonic consumes a lot of fuel. Northrop studied a multitude of intercept cases and found that speeds above Mach 1.1 were almost never helpful because they severely reduced the combat range. For example, for an F-4 Phantom II, increasing the runout speed from subsonic to Mach 1.5 reduces its combat range by a whopping 70%. But aside from turn rate and combat radius, both of which discourage supersonic flights, there are other factors that diminish the significance of supersonic capability. During World War I and World War II, one of the advantages of high top speeds was escaping enemy fire. But introduction of modern air-to-air -air and surface-to-air guided missiles changed all that. For example, the American AIM-120 air-to-air missile, which entered service in 1991, has a top speed of Mach 4. And some variations of the Russian S-300 missile have a top speed of Mach 7, more than twice as fast as the aircraft that is designed to shoot down. You can run but you can't hide doesn't apply here. In fact, the very opposite is true. As it became clear that combat aircraft are not going to be able to defeat an air defense system simply by the virtue of speed, the strategy changed. You can't run, but you can hide. How about not getting detected in the first place? This emphasis on stealth further reduced the importance of speed. That's because supersonic speeds go hand-in-hand -hand with increased heat signature of the aircraft. The use of afterburners, as well as the aircraft body heating up due to increased air resistance at supersonic speeds, make it easier for infrared sensors to detect the aircraft. This is why the maximum sustained speed of the F-22 Raptor was actually reduced from Mach 1.8 to Mach 1.6 to reduce the heat load on the leading edge of the composite wing and thus improving stealth. The original utility of military aircraft was reconnaissance, flying over, taking pictures and returning to base. Compared to those days, the imagery technology available today is far superior but requires more space than what can fit inside an SR-71 fuselage. The technological advancements in satellite and UAVs have proven more effective for imagery reconnaissance, which are alternatives to supersonic reconnaissance aircraft. Designing an aircraft that can handle supersonic speeds adds significant design complexities that need to be addressed. The higher the top speed, the more complicated things get. The need for complex air intakes to slow down the airflow to subsonic speeds adds weight. The need for high-powered, low-bypass engines usually means lower fuel efficiency. But these imposed changes that enable those top speeds negatively impact aircraft performance in high subsonic speeds. And going back to that study of the 100,000 sorties during the Vietnam War, the subsonic range is where these aircraft are mostly operating in. An aircraft like the F-35 has a top speed of Mach 1.6, but it can carry more missiles, is stealth, and has a bigger combat range, compared to a fighter like F-104, which had a top speed of over Mach 2, but suffered from a smaller combat range and could carry less armament. The new fighters are designed for marathons, and not sprints. <laughs>